Welcome to my basement, everybody. I have an incredible guest today, somebody that is a hero of mine in the video game industry. He's made some of my favorite video games of all time. We're talking Defender, we're talking Smash TV, and my absolute favorite arcade game in history of all time is uh, Robotron 64, or Robotron, sorry, I threw in the 64 there. But you know what it is? You have 2084. Robotron 2084, but you have like a Nintendo 64 like sign above you up there, and I'm 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 I'm, I'm curious what that is, but it reminded me of the uh, Nintendo 64 pop pop right in my head. But Eugene Jarvis is here with me, and he is um, a phenomenal creator, still building lots and lots of fantastic arcade content for us uh, in his uh, current company called Raw Thrills. And I, I the first question I have for you, Eugene, is that the motto that you kind of live by as a game maker? Is that what you've always pursued, this idea of raw thrills and giving people thrill like that? Yeah, I mean, to me, that's the essence of the arcade experience. You know, it's it's uh, just that, that magic of like playing a game for the first time or getting into the zone like in Robotron or something. And you just, you know, you just you're in this magical zone. You, you like you can't get killed. You, you could do anything you want and just like you everything you do is right and it's just you know bullets flying left and right and bombs bursting all around you and somehow you just you're there you know and it's just it's a magic it's thrilling and that's what that's what i want to be it's i think to me gaming is is kind of a visceral experience it's a intuitive experience and it's just just having that oh my god that was so cool you know did you always feel that, or was that something that you kind of learned in retrospect? Something that you kind of picked up on as you saw people have a visceral reaction to the games that you were building? No, you know that was really my reaction. You know, like the first time I played Space Invaders. I mean, it was just there was just like this this magical world. I mean, you know, 1978. You know, like we didn't even I, we barely had color TVs in those days. <laughs> yeah, like pre yes pre-internet pre you know it was, it was bc and uh just the, the, you know <laughs> here was like a tv that you could play on and there's like ai characters what we thought were ai it turned out it was artificial stupidity rather than artificial intelligence <laughs> but it was uh but you just you got in you dropped into that world it was a it was a, a new reality a virtual reality in a primitive state and and you just dropped into that world and you lived that world of, of space invaders and that that was kind of the first game, although I guess Space Wars also, which was an yep. uh, um, amazing game from actually the early 60s, if you can believe, and probably and great, great uh, player versus player. But uh, Space Invaders was the first real player versus machine game that got you got you into the zone. And you had already been working um, with, I think, Steve Ritchie at the time, making pinball games, right. and you, you had a history in amusements, but... You know, I, I share the similar kind of fascination with how video games just kind of blipped on. And, and, and that, it was that the way that it was for you? It's like they weren't there, and then they were there, and they were massive almost immediately. Like, people just went, oh my god, this is so cool. But did you see that as your gateway? Did you see it as, well, this is where I'm going to throw my my creative force? You know, because it feels like that's what happened yeah, with you. Yeah. Is you you yeah. got the door opened, and you you went to town. Yeah, I mean, there had been video games, there had been Pong, there was, you know, Breakout, there was um, obviously Space Wars, you know, so, some pretty cool games, but nothing that just totally grabbed me. I was a pinball guy, you know, and I was like, yeah. I was like man, this is, you know, pinball, it's just such a rich experience. And uh, and I just thought, you know, the early video games were kind of primitive, not a lot mm. of replayability, um, and just pretty simple, you know, but fun. But simple, kind of like you know, a pet rock or something. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but you know, once the microprocessor got into the video games with Space Invaders and you know Pac Man and you know all the rest of them, um, it it just blew it up. And it was like night and day. It was like you went from you know a stick figures jumping around on the screen, you know, pong balls to you know fully formed alien invasion. Amazing. Um, I watched uh, Josh Shway's uh, Insert Coin doc, and I had him on the show not too long ago, and I, I absolutely loved it. Y your bits were the standouts for me, though, and um, as as much as the 
the the 90s era midway was phenomenal and and uh, we saw the rise of nba jam and mortal Kombat. I, I, I what was clear in that documentary but I, what i know innately because i've been following your career and i've talked with you many times over the years is that you know those games really stood on the shoulders of giants like yourself and what was it like for you to reflect on those days and uh what were your thoughts on the, on the way that the documentary came together and do you feel like i feel like there's a lot more to say about the the early days of midway uh yeah you know um it was an awesome documentary and you know i i kind of actually i didn't know what i was doing on screen so much but <laughs> the <there's laughs> great guys in there um but, uh, you know, what it was, you know, you build on the shoulders of games before, just as I built on, you know, with Defender, kind of, just kind of sideways Space Invaders in some ways, you know? And, sure, yeah. And, and then, you know, you're playing, uh, you know, Space Invaders with your left hand, and then, you know, your right hand was Space Wars, you know? So it was, I mean, you know, that's how you, you know, to make something original, rip off more than two things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and... Uh, um, but, uh, you know, so it, it, you know, you build on everything and that's, that's the cool thing about it. You know, it's, it's like, we're all just building. It's a free exchange of ideas from everywhere and, and just incredible new things come up. You know, you think everything's been invented, like, you know, I, I mean, there was kind of a time, you know, when the video game crash hit in the mid eighties and, you know, we had, you know, character games and we had shooter games and we had sports games and we had, you know, it was kind of like everything's been done you know like yeah. like what what am i gonna do now you know and and but then it's like um i mean it was so weird it was like i remember there was a time like hey let's make a football game nobody has ever made a football game like yeah let's make one you know and then then you like you know you go to the arcade and like fuck somebody else got a football game you know, <laughs> that idea. well you know that's done that's done you know so screw football games let's let's make the first you know let's make the first hockey game you know it's like i mean yeah. It was so when you, you didn't realize like there's going to be more than one football game. <laughs> like, you know, it's going to be whole genres of stuff for for you know, you know it's it's like each 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 genre is like a mini like supernova, creating you know all this incredible potential ideas for the future. You know, uh, and I when did you realize that? When did you? When did that really kind of come into your head that this is an endless medium and we're just sort of scratching the surface right now? Yeah, I think it was really after the, the kind of the first crash, and um, you know, after you know, we were all kind of it was such a mania, you know, for a few yeah. years. I think everybody had maybe a little too much screen time and you know wanted to do a little detox and uh, you know go to the Canyon Ranch or something. But um, the uh, uh, I, I think, you know, you, you start reflecting like, well, where are games going, you know? And, and I was just, I was kind of thinking about stuff and like, and I was thinking like, wow, man, um, you know, they had, I, I don't even remember like early, some of the early uh, Midway games, they had this game called Journey where you yep. actually saw the members of the band on the screen, you know? And yep. it was like, wow, man, you're like, they have people, you know, they're digitizing people in a video game. And then it was like, well, hell man, let's, like really, why are all video games cartoons? You know, like most movies aren't cartoons; they're live action things. You know, and that's kind of where the inspiration of an art came in. You know, it's like, well, holy, you know, man, we can do live action movie video games where you live the game. You know, and and you know, now forty years later, I mean, the stuff is is better than movies. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's awesome, man. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, creating Robotron. And, uh, you know, I know that this is one of your games that you're most famous for. Is it still, yeah. I, I think I've asked you before, is it your favorite of the games that you've made? Yeah, it is. For some reason, uh, yeah, I just, it's the one I come back to. I mean, uh, and I think, you know, Defender is a great game, but I think, I, you know, I just don't have the Twitch for it anymore. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> I like to think Robotron is, although you know, there's a lot of Twitch there, but it's more of like the Zen the Zen mind of video games, you know, you like, you, you kind of have to, you know, center yourself and like, you know, go into a trance and somehow you can, everything works out, you know? Um, are you, are you, um, well, let's talk a little bit about the uh, philosophy behind the game and what it yeah. took for you to, to kind of, you know, center on the idea of moving with one hand and, and shooting in different directions with the other. Cause that hadn't been done before. And it's still, 
it's that idea is copied more and more, but it's still relatively rare as a concept. But it's so pure. You nailed something right away with that. Yeah, it was. Um, it, it was based on you know I had some frustrations playing Berserk, which was mm. an early robot game, and, and I've it, got Berserk on the uh, Vectrex behind me back oh there, God. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just by yeah. just by coincidence. <laughs> and I just I was really I mean, actually I was making Defender at the time. We were just had a couple more months to go on Defender, and and like you know went to the arcade like what what is this this new game Berserk you know like and it was just like. Again, I had one of those like experiences. Like this is so incredible. I just got sucked into the reality, and you know, just you know, dreamt of Evil Auto and these robot and these you know evil robots, and uh, you know, and, and that, but I, it was just frustration with the control, you know, because first of all, you had these electric walls, like electrified walls, so you, you really were cramped. You know, there wasn't a lot of freedom, like say with Robotron. And yeah. It, it was maze, and so you had to be very touchy with your controller. But then, at the same time, you had to point it at something to shoot at, you know. And but you start moving toward that thing, you know. And it's just like, damn, you know, like can't we? How do you like move? You know, like can't we have a different move than a shoot? You know. And, and you think like, well, in real life, you know, if you're, you can, you know, run away from somebody and shoot them. You know, it's like having that independence, um, just you know, would open, you know open up so much more gameplay and uh but it's interesting how that kind of a pure um two joystick uh move fire game um you know for a lot of people that was too much they really yeah. could and, and this was early in the in the evolution you know yeah. like people really could only deal with one joystick at a time so it, it turned out it was kind of the select group of people in uh a lot of like ambidextrous people or, or left-handed people who are tend to be ambidextrous because it's a right-hand world. So it, it was a, uh, you know, maybe like different, you know, right brain, left brain. I don't know what it was, but it was a different set of people that played Robotron. That's that's super interesting. So yeah. it, it was, um, it I'm sure it was a successful game, but maybe it wasn't quite the smash that Defender was or Joust was or some of the other ones that, that Midway had. Um, you know, I think it was probably as it was as good as it's Joust, but the Defender was the killer. You know, probably Defender sold like seventy thousand games, where Robotron was around nineteen or something. Crazy, it's a, and but it's it's, it's, it's for an arcade game. It, it's amazing, and it's endured as well because I talk to people all the time, and it's their yeah. favorite, and it's and it's my favorite, and it's exactly that sort of Zen thing. I was a basketball player in high school, and I was learning to dribble with both hands, and I don't know if. Uh, you know that was part of it. It's just the ability to, and and because it was so, you know, unique, it had this kind of, uh, I don't know, this extra cool factor to it. You know, but you went back to Dual Stick with Smash TV and Total Carnage, right. and those those are also indelible games, especially Smash TV. Smash TV feels like 2020, as a matter of fact. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, oh my god, <laughs> little, uh, you know, kind of like yeah, killing. Killing uh, people for toasters, man. That's a wrap. That's like. <laughs> I, I, I I still love the game, and um, you. I don't know if you hear this that often, but th this this was a game that I played. On, it's the, that cartridge, by the way, uh, that I played on my Super Nintendo back in the day with my wife. We were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time, but we finished Smash TV together. That's one of the the pillars of us <laughs> enduring as a couple as we played video games together, and that was one that we both loved. Um, what, what was it like pitching a concept like that to Midway? Was it pretty much, if you have an idea, you go, or did you um, have to go through? You know, it's funny. It was very informal in those days. And, yeah. uh, and you just, you know, if you had a certain track record, um, you know, you could pretty much do something. And, uh, Mark Jamel, um, was really a, a big force behind that game. And yep. he loved the twin shooters and... You know, was really wanted to wanted to like bring Robotron back, and I'm kind of like, I'm like going, you know, I, you know, like, dude, I mean, Robotron, it was good, but you know, it was, you know, not a huge seller, you know, and you know, are you sure you want to do this? You know, it's like, and uh, but you know, um, I got psyched by it, and, and we decided to, to bring Smash TV back. I mean, to Robotron back as Smash TV, and and but with all new wrinkles, you know, 
I mean, it's like, uh, you know, bringing the whole game show, you know, the uh, Running Man thing, and then kind of the RoboCop feel to it. Good luck. You'll need it. Pretty much we just came up with it and went with it. I mean, there wasn't there wasn't really any, you know, if, if you had some clout in the studio, you just did with the, whatever you wanted to, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, well, you, you know, Midway obviously uh, moved from pinball and, and gone into the video game industry yeah. and then got heavy into uh, the arcade scene and the arcade scene kind of transformed and transitioned and they got into the, to the uh, home scene. And you did some home software for a while, but I, I feel like your heart has always been in the arcade. Is yeah, that true? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, there's just like, I don't know, it was uh, certainly early on you know just the controls even today they, they, they again they don't have that physical feel it's much yeah. more much more mental you can't you know like robotron you can like grab the game and like you know slam it against the wall and you know it's just like you, you, you feel like you, the more you push that joystick you're pushing you know i i pretty much destroyed my left hand um because <laughs> you're pushing that joystick like you, even though it's a digital switch you're not going to go any faster for some reason, if you press it, you know, with 3,000 pounds of force, <laughs> you're, you're convinced you're going to go, you're going to move just slightly, you know, 1.1 pixels per second um, faster, you know, and, and so, but there's that, like that, there's kind of this physical, your whole body is getting into the control, you know, where um, the console is more of a mind game. You have to be very um, relaxed and very precise. You know, the joystick has like one half, one millionth of an ounce of force on it, you know, so, but it's great. You can really move it quickly. Um, it's probably a better control, but you just, it feels to me like it's, it's almost out of control, you know, and, and yeah. it's, 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 you don't, I don't know. To me, it's just the arcade is the arcade controls just feel right, feel physical. It's more athletic. I guess there is that uh, uh, real connection to the machine as part of the content as well, right? Like it, it becomes, it, it's like you're doing a dance with the game, you know, like it physicalizes the whole connection to it. It's not just the, what you see on screen. It's like you are enveloped in that world while you play. Yeah. And you kind of like, and it like, you know, when you, like when you finish a wave, you're like, you know take your hands off the joysticks and jump around and like, yeah, you know, like, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you, you can't do that with your controller. You can't throw your controller away. Like, oops, you know, like, it's just yeah. like, you know, you're just like, boom, I did it, you know, <laughs> kind of like, you know, you're, you're, uh, well, you can do that once and then you go, well, that was a $70 mistake. Yeah. I can't, I can't do that again. <laughs> yeah. I guess the, the Wii guys were throwing their Wiimotes, you know, through the, <laughs> you know 70 inch tv screens i remember that was that was pretty interesting <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I, I, what, what's it what's it like to make arcade games now is it the same as it was for you in the 80s and the 90s is it the same principles and the same philosophies or is, is it a totally different business for you um not you know it's very very sim similar principles you know i think the principles yeah. are still the same and it's weird like pinball kind of is maybe you know, almost a precursor to video games in the sense that, you know, they have three balls, you have three lives, you know, it's like, it, it's interesting how the, the, you know, you play as long, you know, in the classic arcade, you know, you play as long as your lives last, pinball's the same way, you know, so it kind of comes from the arcade video game evolved from pinball, like the rules of pinball. Sure. And, uh, so, but in all the things, you know, the the the, the uh, user interface, the making the player feel empowered, the um, you know, just have to make things, you know, it, it's it, you do have to make things easier than you ever thought, you know, because you know it's it's you get so good d doing a game that you forget what it's like to be a bad player, you know. Yeah. And so you really got to think about newbies and and you know, having you know not to create too much of a horror show, which. Robotron maybe is, but <laughs> I remember, you know, I remember just, just when I was, when I was coming up with the, the, the idea, you know, I was like in, of Robotron, you know, and it was like, kind of like, uh, it's like taking Space Invaders to two dimensions, you know, like Space Invaders comes down from the top and Robotron's like, well, man, you know, let's, let's just put you in the middle of the screen and have shit coming from everywhere, you know, and, you know, and it's just like, that was a lot. Yes, for right, sure. Or, yeah. you know, 
not really newbie friendly game. But, <laughs> uh, but it's but it's but you you kind of have these these rules and how to make the player feel like they're the most powerful thing in the universe. But then you have to make the enemies just that much more powerful, you know, to yeah. balance. You know, and so, um, but it's this whole dance of you know, and 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 kind of the difficulty, you know, curves. You know, I think one of the cool things about um, you know, really rich game, it's not just you know, you know, wave one is easy, wave two is medium, and wave three you die. You know, it's it's you know, it has this curve, and then maybe you get to level and it, it goes back down again. You relax. You know, you kind of it's kind of like the waves of the ocean. You know, they're yeah always interesting you know if, if you know if every wave was bigger than the last wave you know it's it's not interesting so you have to you know give the guy some hope even though he's he's on a terminal mission you know it's like yeah you're like yeah. oh i'm doing better i'm doing better you're like <laughs> yeah here you are yeah it's like, <laughs> so, oh man yeah. and then and then there, there gets you know if you're doing the multiplayer type games you know human human competition you know and I, I did, we've done a lot of driving games over the years you know the cruising series and fast and furious and um and we just brought back cruising blast you know a couple of years ago um uh-huh. but it you know that's about how do you have a competitive experience that's fun you yeah. know because when you really have the most enjoyment you have to be able to have some kind of handicapping you know some kind of thing like i you know my my brother kicks my ass every day you know i suck how do we have fun together you know so you have to you know you put in some kind of rubber banding you put in some kind of uh you know exciting features that basically the idea is you compress the result of a game you know like so if i you know if i race uh uh usain bolt and you know in the 100 meter race you know instead of him beating me by you know 90 yards you know, it's like we compress the race down so that the 90 yards is like nine inches, you know, <laughs> and, yes. you, know, and yes. I'm sort of, you know, I'm right with them, you know, even though I'm getting <laughs> my ass killed, you know, so it's like you have, you know, to make things interesting, to make it fun, to make it a, a great competition, uh, you know, so there's, you know, a lot of things go into play um, to make it make an exciting, fun game. Dude, when, when I see you on screen, when I talk with you, you know, when I saw you in the documentary, I see this guy that, I don't know if you this was on purpose, but you found something that has given you great joy, and it comes off of you. Do, 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 you, do you feel that? I mean, I just watched Tron not too long ago, the, the original one, and Jeff Bridges, you know, showing off his arcade. I, I get that vibe from you, you know? Like, you are just surrounded by all, all this great enjoyment that you've created for the world. Is is that is that a, a, a good characterization of yourself? Do you feel like you've been able to bring a lot of happiness to people over the years? Uh, you know, to some extent. You know, I'm always. Uh, I, I just you know I, the, the problem is you know you work on a game, and um, there's always at some point you have to ship it. You know, it's like yeah, and it's like and it's like you know a friend. You know, it's, it's real work. Exactly, and and that guy. I mean, it's funny. Like this guy, I, I was old computer programmer back in my Atari days. And he, and he said, yeah, you know, at some point the software becomes useful, <laughs> you know? And, <laughs> and, and so, you know, you, you have to ship and it's always like, and there's always like three things that really pissed you off about that game that you yes. just, you know? And so, I don't know. It's, it's to me, I think one thing being a, a great game designer, you have to kind of be passionate and you have to really, um, you really, you always have like, what am I doing wrong? You know, it's like, that's always, you know, you wake up in the morning, like, what did we screw up on this game? You know, what are the mm. hundred things I got to fix? You know, and, you, and you, you're trying to fix it and fix it. And, you know, you fix 10 things and you find 10 more, you know, and, and at some point it's a pretty good game. It's not perfect, you know, and, and you just ship it. And, but you always, you know, let me have that nagging suspicion, man, I wish I could go back and fix those bugs and you know, <laughs> make that perfect game. You know, and but then then after a while you go, well, that's too much work. I'll just make a new game that'll be perfect. You know, <laughs> and uh, but it, the joy is uh, watching people play your games. I mean, that's the true joy. And, and the cool thing in the arcade is, although now with streaming, you know, you can watch all kinds of people playing games. But the yeah. arcade, you can stand next to someone and and see them live. You know, enjoying your game, seeing the the laughter, the smiles, the 
you know, the broke the uh, broken screens, you know, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, the kicked in coin doors by the guy <laughs> got frustrated. And, and it, but it's, it's almost like the, the battle today is really you don't want everybody to have a great experience. It's almost like you just want a reaction, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. You can. Well, you, you, you want the person to feel like they've overcome it, too. Right. Like you want exactly. to. It, it should be a challenge so that it's not like a flat, like there should be people that are awesome at your thing, right? Yep. That's part of what yep. what you're building. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if the guy cares enough about the game to like break the screen, that's <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, you get that, re like he, re he really cared about it. You know, like, you know? And, and I th that's almost the best compliment of all, you know, is like... <laughs> Does it feel like a, a mental chess game sometimes? Like, like because you know gamers are so much better than you probably can design to, and they probably figure out all kinds of ways to beat what you've created. Is it a bit of like a, a, a head to head sometimes? Does it feel like, well, let's see if they can do this, and then they go and they do do it. Does it feel like a little back and forth sometimes? Uh, you know, certainly like Robotron. I mean, I basically threw everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, okay, this time, you know, it's not going to happen. You know, it's like, this is going to be the one they won't be. And uh, human ingenuity is just uh, incredible. You know, the, the talent of, of people and unlikely people that you would never, you know, very mild mannered people could be the greatest, you know, Robotron player in the world. You know, it's, uh, it is amazing. Uh, you know, they're just and, and and you have to respect it. And like the the way they go after the game in a totally different way than you thought, you know, would yeah. to be played. You know, and and I, I mean that's the, that was one of the Robotron. There's just like a lot of magical stuff happened out there. It was kind of like emergent. What do you call it? Emergent behavior. You know, yes. where you get enough like primitive AIs together, and then all of a sudden you get these weird behaviors, and and the great players kind of learn how these things react and a lot of it's the bugs you know the bugs mm. almost give life to a game you know they, they create these weird exceptions weird things happen you know um you know you and uh the uh you know which which it makes it something cool something different you know and lots of randomness i think is, is also key people love randomness you know they i mean yeah. you know five trillion slot machine players you know aren't, aren't sitting there <laughs> because they you know, they want to control the deal. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's it, randomness is so interesting and it, it creates all kinds of interesting things. Like, look, again, like watching the ocean, you know? Oh, dude, I know. It's a huge deal. It's a huge pull. And I'm, I'm having this conversation with my kid right now about uh, blind boxes because in the toy industry, it's all about, uh, you know, buying a package where you don't know what you're going to get. And she is very keen and knows that the fun of it is the surprise of it. But that's also... That can be a dark, slippery slope where you just don't know what you're spending your money on. And it's always this, and it's definitely a part of the video game industry, part yeah. of the casino industry. Um, you have made so many games now, though. Do you do you know how many games you you have worked on? Do you have a count of how many things you've put um, out into the world? I kind of I kind of lost count a while back, but <laughs> I don't know. It's probably I don't know, maybe thirty or forty. I don't know what it is, but. Uh, um, and every game you want to make it like the best game you know you can you know and uh sometimes it doesn't work out but <laughs> what know. do you what do you look for for designers at raw thrills because i know you run this company and and you see the raw thrills brand if you ever go to an uh, you know an arcade that i've been into some incredible arcades like the the ones in portland are just amazing um, but if you look around, I played this giant Space Invaders game that you guys right, made. Right, right, right. It was right. just mind-blowing. And, I, it, you know, it, it gives me a great raw thrill to know that you're behind all, all, a lot of these brand new, you know, ways for us to escape. But, like, what do you guys look for when you bring in someone new or, you know, someone that hasn't designed for arcades before? I, because that seems to be a, a rare discipline. Exactly. And, and, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, what do you look for? Yeah, it's really. Um, I think it's really. It's passion. You know, somebody who has passion for the game. Um, you know, they can learn the industry. You know, but and it's, and you, and you need to be able to um, accept feedback. You, know, you need to be like, if you know, ten players. If you have this, you know, it always starts out like, I have the genius game. You know, yeah. This is, yeah. This, is this is the new, you know, Fortnite. This is going to rule the world. 
you know, and then, you know, like 10 pe people play it and nine people go, you know, this really sucks, you know, and, <laughs> and if, and if you're that one guy that, that goes, no, this is great, you know, that's, they're all bullshit. This game is great. You know, if you're that guy, then either you're like Steve Jobs or you're a complete failure, but, but you're probably not going to make it as a game designer, you know. You right. got to listen to the people. You got to listen to the players. You got to, um, you know, see what's going on. You know, and, and be, be always. You know, it's like it's like you almost got to be ready to, like, if some if this your favorite feature is a loser, then jump into something else. It's almost. Yeah. I, I see it. It's almost, like you can't plan it all out ahead of time. You can't write a thousand page document. And this is the way the game's going to be. You have to go and try something, and play it, and like, is that fun or not? You know. And then you, then you go, okay, well, that's oh, that's sort of fun, but, but there's 20 things that are bad. And I need to fix those 20 things, you know? And so it's it's an iterative process of playing the game and, and making the game. And the Space Invaders game that we did is a huge, is a huge uh, you know, example of that because, um, you know, we started out with just regular old Space Invaders, you know, and which I love. I love that game dearly, but... It's, you know, in, from 1978 to 2020, a lot of shit has happened. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and players... A lot, a, lot of, a lot of shit has happened just in 2020. Right. <laughs> right. right. And, you know, and there's a lot of, you know, we're like, we're like, you know, 40 years of ADHD beyond that. And so... Yes. Like yes. a modern game, you just have to have a lot more going on. You have to have a lot more intense and... You know, you need you got to get people's attention. There's five billion channels of shit out there, you know, and like yeah. your channel has to be the craziest, you know. And so it was weird. We were, we were playing the game of the game with the regular Space Invaders and, and just go, man, you know, I, I love this game, but I don't think kids today are going to get it, you know. And and then, uh, you know, right next to it, we had our Jurassic Park game with these big ass machine guns, you know, <laughs> and it's like. Like, you know, well, what's, well, how can we fix a Space Invader game? You look at me like, well, shit, put a machine gun on it. <laughs> what the hell? Of course. You know, like, that's, that's like the dream. What's the dream? What is your, what is the dream of Space Invaders? You know, it's like, I don't want to have a, you know, a one shot gun. I want to have, you know, a massive weapon, you know? And, yeah. Yeah. And so then, you know, we, we put in the massive weapon, then it was cool, but, you know, you killed them all in like three seconds. So then it was like, well, what do we do now? Well, let's have multiple <laughs> matrices of space invaders. We'll have, you know, five, co you know, five squares of space invaders, you know, coming down like, you know, have, you know, 90 or, you know, 300 space invaders coming down, you know, we'll have really fast ones. And then like, okay, now it's too hard. Okay. Now we have to give the player power ups, you know, <laughs> and, you know, so it's like this back and forth uh you know dance between the power of the enemy and your power and trying to make that fun and exciting and so but then it became, it was like but the magic was putting those machine guns on there it was it was similar to robotron where robotron you know we I, i'd worked on the game like two days and when when i had when i got move fire going and it was just like okay you know i had like the grunt on the screen and move fire and like this is fun you know like this is just you know, I can't fuck this up. This is this is too much fun. You know, it's like, which is very rare. I think it's very rare to have a game that's that much fun after one day that you know you won. You know, that's but, awesome. Um, that was magic. You know, I've, I've I, unfortunately I've worked on a lot of games that weren't fun after two years. <laughs> you know, that's that's a, that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must be. Uh, it must be. I mean, I, I, I can feel the pull just talking with you. It must be just incredible to have like physical assets that you can attach and, re, you know, detach and reapply. And that's part of the design of your game. It must that I mean, that must be a huge part of the pull for you. Yeah. The controls, having it a control that's precisely what you want. You that's know? so great. And, uh, that, and that's kind of the, the magic of the arcade. You know, we can and we can have the big screens now, you know, and, you know, just creating this crazy it's a spectacle you know and, yeah and, and so that's it, it's uh you know it's kind of a golden age right now of the arcade although with the COVID thing i know i was gonna ask uh, has that just and it's so <laughs> brutal i i have a great friend that uh has opened up a, a place in uh, toronto called 8-bit beans 
and they just opened up and then this damn COVID came out like this awesome cafe arcade thing. And there seems to be more and more of that happening out there, which is great for your business. Uh, but everybody's in like, uh, w- 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 how is it right now? Is everybody yeah. just calling, calling, crying and saying, I, I just, can't buy this? Or? Yeah, we're just in suspended animation, you know, so. Um, but, you know, this is not going to last forever. And, and no, uh, but, you know, it's it, it, this tragedy. I mean, there's a lot of uh, arcades, a lot of places that are, you know, struggling really badly. And, uh, yeah. you know, and we're uh, we're, we're going to, you know, we're just working on the next generation of games and. You know, until our money runs out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the quarters keep coming, man. I guess they're not quarters anymore. They're tokens. I, dude, and I, I, I love going to arcades still to this day. And uh, if I had a dream, it would be to make my show, Electric Playground, in an arcade, surrounded by the history of this medium. There's something just pure and beautiful about uh, the physicalization of, of yeah. these these incredible entertainments that just popped up, man. They just popped out of nowhere. And and, and you were there. I, I definitely have to ask about Midway. It's owned by Warner Brothers. There's all of these brands. And right. I just feel like they're just sitting there, you know? And when you see something like a giant Space Invaders in the middle of this flashy, cool arcade, it's like, well, why isn't there, a, an, you know, a brand new Defender or a brand new NARC or a brand new... Does is that something that you would want to do? Is that something that you wonder? You know why isn't it being done? Um, you know, I I, uh, I think you know the right timing. You know, um, they you know they tried to do a couple of narks, and you know they had one where you know you became the drug dealer or something. Yes. <laughs> like yes. And it kind of I think that kind of as you as they call it jumping the shark. <laughs> you know. <it's> like, <laughs> um, so, you know, in some ways, I'm glad they haven't done another one, <laughs> another narc. But, um, yeah, I think I think there is some 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 something there, you know, and uh, um, it would be love to love to, you know, revisit some of this with today's technology. And, you know, I always dream. I don't know. You're familiar with the game Killer Queen? Uh, it sounds familiar, but I, tell me about it. So it's a um, these guys, uh, I guess they're from New York, um, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. So they're cool. Yeah. And uh, it's it's a ten player arcade game where wow. the action is um, it's kind of like Joust meets Super Mario or something. <laughs> and uh, but it's it's it's, it's awesome like ten player live experience, you know. And, and it's in a few our arcades around the country, and uh, it's like it's it's just like a whole new kind of thing to get ten people yeah. together and five versus five, two different teams. That's awesome. And Crazy, crazy game, and uh, but I always, you know, I, I kind of get inspiration from that, and I go, well, hell, how about you know, if we get ten guys playing Robotron, you know, on some yes. screen, you know, and and uh, you know, do something, you know, riff on that, or you know, I, a lot of the classic video games would be so much fun to open it up to like large group play. You know? Oh my God, that is an excellent idea because you, you'd be like laying down cover fire and flanking and yeah. almost almost gears of warring. A Robotron type of thing. That would be incredible. Yeah. Please, be- ma- please make that game. Okay. I want to play that game. <laughs> well, uh, watch for my Kickstarter, man. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> do you? Do you? Um, I know what happens with a lot of comic book creators and a lot of um, you know people that have been making cool things for a long time is that they get invited to conventions and things like that. And I'm I'm wondering if the, these barcades have you know rolled out a red carpet for you to come down and be a guest and. You know, open th- some of these things. Does that ever happen for you? Uh, yeah, on occasion. I, lo- I actually I love going out to these places. So- sometimes I just go out anonymously. You know, it's like yeah, because I don't want to be a big deal and and just because I love to just watch the players play and see what they're doing. You know, and see sure. what they're doing. And uh, but we, you know, we have a place in Chicago that um, we debut a lot of our games. You know, and uh, um, it's called Logan Arcade and. Uh, and uh, so that's it's kind of near and dear to my heart, um, and uh, um, so that's cool. But yeah, I, you know, we go around. There's a, I guess there's a, actually quite a scene in Chicago. There's another place called Galloping Ghosts. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's, I think they have more classic video games than any place. Uh, oh, that's in, awesome! In, in the world, I think they have like seven, uh, like five hundred uh, classic games. It's it's a, um, it's not it's not a bar. It's just a true arcade, and you, I think you pay like. 
20 bucks or something to play all day. And, you know, until your, you know, your phosphor burns your eyeballs out. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That sounds like heaven to me, brother. I love that that kind of thing. You know, I get it. It was it was that stuff that got me on my path, you know. Like it was it was just the uh, just the love of the arcade experiences that you and your colleagues were making, and and uh, I totally just loved games and wanted to find out who was making them, and that's what got me going, and that's why I eventually ended up at Midway, and we you know visited and talked with you back in the day, and yeah, it's all very surreal to me. Are you still a fan? Do you still play lots of stuff? Is there, are you always kind of doing research on what what is getting made? Um, yeah, abs- you know, I, I play all the uh, arcade games. I, you know, I, I am a little, uh, I'm kind of in the match free games to to an extent, you know. And Sure, uh, sure. I'm playing this one called uh, Toon Blast. I don't know if you heard, heard of that one. No, uh, no. I, th- I think it's, I think Zenka just bought these guys. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, 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 it was, I mean, it's amazing the, um, you know, kind of the whole monetization, you know, of these, uh, of like the match free and a lot, a lot of the mobile stuff, you know. Um, yep. And they pulled uh, a lot from arcades, didn't they? They pulled exactly. a lot of what? Like, yeah, like they learned a lot about like, oh, you didn't do that well. Oh, but why don't you throw in a little bit more and you'll get a little bit further the next? Yeah, it's amazing. So so much learning from what you guys were kind of putting yeah, well, together. Yeah, Smash TV was all about that. You know, it's like yeah, you know, it's the continue game. You got to keep paying. You know, and you hit the boss monster. That's the the paywall. You know, it's like, you know, wave 73 and Candy Crush, man. You're, you're never going to get through this without buying some shit, you know. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, we kind of pioneered that stuff. And I, I don't know if you remember the game Cyberball where they had the... Oh, yeah. Uh, you could buy that extra, uh, you know, buy a robotic quarterback. You know, you could get, upgrade your, your guys. Um, I think the off-road game, you could, you know, it's 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 interesting, like, you would always, uh, you know, before you started the game with your buddies, you'd say, okay, now nobody buy upgrades, okay? Nobody yeah. buy upgrades. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, and then like, you know, halfway through, you know, you're rifling the money and you're getting behind and <laughs> you're upgrading everything, you know? So it, it's interesting how it, it uh, you know, just that from that night, from the 80s arcade game, you know, the, uh, basically the, uh, mobile game today is you know it's it's the arcade is in your pocket you know and it's it's inescapable yeah. it's inescapable yeah. but, uh, you know it's it's uh what, what you know it's maybe even more addictive well you you mentioned the arcade is in your pocket but here is my thing and i, I know you can't do anything about this but I have wanted a perfect portable Robotron forever. And all of these great portable machines keep coming. And we now arguably have the best portable machine ever with the Nintendo Switch. You, there still is no definitive portable Robotron 2084. Now, that, I know that goes against all of the sacredness of the arcade experience. But but there is still, like, in, to this day, no one has crafted. Now, there's been a million mobile copies of Robotron and you and you see a lot of that has there been one that you've played one dual stick shooter that you've played over the years that has been like oh man they really they they nailed something there I really I I respect their decisions um you know certainly like like Geometry Wars and some of those yeah uh, you know there were some classics um uh and there actually there's you know in, in the uh, console front there's there's been a few um actually uh, yeah, a few years ago i worked with this finnish company um house mark and we did this yes. next makina which was kind of a you know robotron-esque you know it was, it was robotron with you know uh human growth hormone and steroids <laughs> and it's like, awesome it was i don't i don't know I don't know if I've played that. I like House Mark stuff. I've played a bunch of stuff, but I don't think I've played that particular one. I, I'm going to download that after we're done. Yeah, it's. I think it. it may, you know, it's it's very rare. Um, I think it was just too too damn hard. You know. Yeah. Like, uh, it, and that's the problem with the Robotron games. But it was like Robotron to the you know third power. Um, but uh, you know, it's tough. It, they become. It's a hard game and. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a more of it's a niche audience, but I would love to see something. You know, have a have a nice Robotron on the Switch. You know, with today's controllers, obviously, you know, you have the Move Fire thing. So you know, it's not like Atari where you you know, it's funny. Like the first Robotron, I had to take two Atari sticks and screw them onto a board. I, yeah, I had that version. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I remember I had it for the uh, 
the the Atari 800 computer, and you could play it with one joystick and one button. It was like, what? This is not Robotron. So you can't play it that way. But yeah, that, the um, you know, it's, you mentioned the uh, Super Nintendo Smash TV, and yeah. it's amazing how many people because the arcade game was fairly scarce. So yeah, me, most Smash TV players have grown up on that one and. That was just like an amazing port by a friend of mine, Jamie Rivette. Um, unbelievable quality in that that port, and it's just it's it's, 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 just incredible. it still plays and runs beautifully in 2020. I've got it on uh, one of the analog um, uh, Super NTs back there, and I play it all the time. It's a beautiful game. Now my kid is playing it right now, which is which is just <laughs> awesome. So. You, you, this has been a big part of your life, video games. And I, I, are you surprised by that? Or was that something that you, as a younger developer, kind of went, no, this is what I want to do for forever and ever? Yeah, I think after I, I got through organic chemistry, I, video games started looking really good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, it, it is, uh, I've always loved playing games. You know, I've been competitive, I love playing chess and you know, blackjack. I remember we were playing blackjack out in the playground, you know, in fifth grade. I mean, you know, thank God we didn't go to jail. But, um, uh, you know, I just always loved games. And, and so it's it's something that I never, you know, as I was growing up, I, I didn't aspire to be a video game writer because video games really didn't exist. You know, yeah. so it was just like a lucky break that by the time I, you know, was looking for a job, there was such a thing as a video game designer or a game designer. I mean, it was pretty cool that's awesome uh can you tell us anything that you're working on right now is there anything that we should be uh, on the lookout for from from roth rills um yeah well we're working uh actually we're working on actually a vr game right now oh um, wow yeah that uh you know and, and there's some the vr technology you know it's been hyped for you know uh i guess it, several times over the yeah, years yes it's, it's, uh, it started i mean the first vr demonstration was in like 1960 eight or something wow. um but uh you know i remember back in the in the uh um early 90s you know there was a big vr thing and you know and i think uh technology was not it was like the newton tablet you know just yep it wasn't there and uh you know frame rate was bad resolution was bad um you know lots of vertigo lots of lots of barf bags and uh and over, you know, and I think uh, you know, we and kind of we had that second coming with Oculus and you know Palmer Lucky, who's a great sales guy, awesome yep. dude, and uh, great great op- entrepreneur. And but you know, again, it wasn't quite ready for its prime time. And but I think it, we're almost. I think just at the point everybody's kind of sick of it. I think. <laughs> I think uh, actually, <laughs> now it's on, time. <laughs> you know, we're at the verge of. Of actually having some really cool headset, you know, like super high resolution, you yep. know, run, running stuff at, at 90, 120 hertz, you know, um, with, you know, 4K, 8K type um, headsets. I mean, I think we're going to see some really cool stuff. And so we got really excited because, um, you know, the arcade, you don't, you don't want to be selling barf bags. And, no. uh, you know, what? clean up on, uh, you know, clean, clean up on aisle seven, you know, it's like. Yeah, yes. Uh, because nobody wants to be the next guy to sit down there, you know. It's like, <laughs> but um, uh, we, uh, you know, so we're, we got in this thing, and so we're doing it. It's based on the um, on King Kong. Oh my God! Really? And so you're, wow. you're, going, you're going to Skull Island, you know. You're um, it's a motion game, um, and uh, you, uh, and you and it's got uh, you actually utilizing your hands as a you know as your interactive piece and uh so it's 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 really mind-blowing and and we're still you know refining it and getting it going but it's going to be out in uh you know maybe six months or something Um, that's incredible man because king kong and godzilla are coming pretty soon right there's going to be a big king kong godzilla right Right. so this is you know pre-godzilla here but (laughs) that's so cool this is you know the reboot King Kong, the reboot, back to the small yeah. I, I mean, I'm just cluing into this, but you're kind of yeah. like at the scale of, uh, you're at theme park scale in some ways at this point, right? Like, that's, that's a, it's, yeah. 
You're yeah. you're in between what we what we can get with our big screen TVs at home on our great machines, and theme parks. And you're building sort of the 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 glue or the thread between these two experiences. Yeah, it's kind of a you know the pint sized theme uh, theme park, but it, it's so cool because you can just put you can get so much. Um, you know, we can really you know like that getting in the zone and getting lost in the game. And obviously the immersion of th VR, I mean, you, yeah. you're, I mean, you can, you know, you're just, you're totally there, you know, like you yep. can't, can't, can't even escape it, you know, and, um, and it's I, been I, a good year for VR. We had uh, Half-Life Alex is just insane. And, uh, the Iron Man VR game that I've just played right. recently is very right. cool. Like it's really coming together and I, I've always felt like VR in, uh, in a, an arcade type setting, just you know, as long as it's safe and not making people sick, it would just be incredible. Yeah. So anyway, we're so we're working on that on that concept, and uh, and uh, you know, we're doing actually we're we're um, we're th we, we've actually been t I don't know you're familiar with the company Arcade One Up. Yeah. Like the mini the mini uh, video cabinets. Yeah, those guys are great. So we've been we've been hanging out with those guys and. Uh, talking about doing a collaboration with them possibly right on. To, to bring some of the classics into the into their format and uh you know very and, nice and uh I, you know it's it's pretty amazing what they've done with these little mini arcade cabinets and they're, they're so cool, cool. yeah I, I i would have a whole bunch of them if i had any more room but i've, <laughs> I've got so many damn action figures and now production equipment in my basement that i can't I don't have room, but they're incredible. So, does that mean we may see Mini Robotron and Mini Def like some of your classics possibly. and some of your babies? Yeah, possibly. Oh, so, man, you know, working on it, uh, working on you know, some, and and maybe some some new things too. Um, oh, that's great. But uh, um, so that's uh, you know really exciting. They're they're coming out with this. I guess it's it's on the street now. Uh, NBA Jam. Yes. It's 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 really a, a uh, you know wonderful uh, um, port of that game, and a beautiful uh, beautiful game. Yeah, so um, so you know it's it's uh, all of a sudden you know it's they're not just eye candy. They're not just you know I mean it's funny like there's a lot of video games that you think like oh my god you know I played Pole Position and that was so cool you know back in 1980 you know and then you play like Pole yeah I go to a classic arcade and play <laughs> Pole Position and I'm like. And I, I never get beyond the first curve, you know, like I'm I yeah. the corner and I hit that boulder. I'm like, you know, like, oh, my God, you know, like I can't do this, you know. And uh, and so some of the games may, you know, are pretty basic and you might not play them. But but I think uh, some of the games have great play value, you know, and yeah. uh, that's what I love. I think some of these later games from the, the 90s era. I mean, the, the play value you're talking about, like with an NBA jam is, you know, you could Endless. play, you could play for, for months, you know, and, and, yeah. uh, and so that, I think that's really cool. And, and so the home arcade, I think, you know, not only you'll have it in your pocket, but you're going to have your home arcade, you know, everybody's going to have a home arcade too, in the, in the real cabinets, you know, so. What, what a the, journey yeah. you're on, man, like yeah. sort of. <laughs> Being one of the founders of the arcade industry and then seeing it all move into the home and then you go back into arcades and now you're making arcades for homes. Like what? Right. What? It never <laughs> stops. So cool. It never, it never stops. So, <laughs> but I, you know, anything that I think the cool thing is to get the kids involved with that format, you know, and yeah, because there, you know, there is life beyond the tablet, you know, <laughs> there is totally life. dude. And, and, I, uh, I'm, I'm, my daughter's come with me, uh, you know, she was a little bit younger, but she's come with me on trips like to Portland and we were in the UK where there were this this great, uh, uh, you know, arcade on a dock and she just is lit up by all of that stuff. It's incredible. It, there, There is something so unique and precious about the whole arcade scene. And I'm so thrilled that you continue in that space. Yeah. I know that you've been working with lots of licensed type you know things yeah. i've seen you do a bat batman game and the right. jurassic park stuff and is is there something that you are dying to make that you know maybe you're chasing the rights for or is there like a you know a beloved property out there that you want to put the eugene jarvis you know stamp on um man that's uh i tell you i'd love to do an arcade version of fortnite um, cool and uh i you know 
I'm, I, I'm gonna have to, you know, have like a hundred million dollar Kickstarter for that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I think that would be really cool to, you know, bring that experience and um, kind of. I mean, we had a really fun time. We did the Halo. I don't know if you Halo. Fun yes. And uh, you know, just incredible um, environment. I mean, I think the world's largest video game ever created. <laughs> and that's fantastic. And. Arcade, and uh, but the um, it was so much fun to get that you know in a, in a four player cooperative mode, you know, and uh, it's it just such a great family game that um, um, really introduced all kinds of kids to the whole Halo universe, and um, that was just it's kind of joy. So that was you know a thing we've been working on for years, you know, trying to get that, and so um, uh, you know, there's there's uh, you know we've always wanted to do a Star Wars thing, you know, and uh, yeah. Um, as, as you know, our, our, our checking account wasn't quite there, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there, there's the, uh, you know, there, it is, it's, there, there is, there's like these dream, you know, the, the, you know, the, you're talking about the bucket list, you know, the, uh, but every game designer, they've got, you know, that 30 games that they've got to finish before they die, you know, and, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's just, an, it's a never ending, <laughs> never ending task. I'd love to see you do an Indiana Jones game. Yeah, yeah, that would that would be totally cool. Uh, actually, maybe VR, man. That, that actually, you know, that could be uh, that could be the format, man. That would be that boulders coming out, <laughs> coming down. Boulders on and mine, <laughs> mine carts and falling yeah. out of airplanes. Uh, I think I think you would have a lot of fun crafting something in that space. That would be great. I guess we need to get some new feedback design yeah. device of like. You know, being beaten to death with like foam, <laughs> foam sticks or something. Uh, you know, get get a little more. You know, maybe mild mild electroshock therapy. You know, just uh, we're 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 designing on the run right now with Eugene Jarvis. That's incredible. That's awesome. Yes, please make that happen. Listen, I I know you're getting phone calls, and I appreciate your your time with us today. It is uh, an honor to uh, to chat with you, and I remain a a fan of yours forever. Um, I can't wait to play the new games that you're working on, and and uh, I will always play the classic games that you've worked on. And uh, just thank you, sir. You are the best, and uh, it was great to chat. Hey, thank you, Victor. Man, you're just. Uh... You know, you're awesome and I, I just love the way you're keeping the the game scene so so alive and vibrant you know with uh with your with your with your podcast man it's just uh i love i love uh i love watching yourself man oh thank you eugene you are the best that is uh eugene jarvis everybody make sure you play well he's got a lot of games for you to play so you better get going because <laughs> you're busy for a while but thank you to eugene jarvis and thank you all for watching we will see you very soon and until then you know what to do play forever.